Hey folks, Steve here with a unboxing video. Today we are going to be looking at Imperium Romanum, the Clash of Legions. Oh, uh, you know what? That doesn't seem quite right. Let's let's we're we're going to be covering Imperium Romanum Two, the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. Yeah, uh, that's still not right, is it? No. Okay. <clears throat> Today we will be looking at Alnofi's Imperium Romanum, the rise and the fall of the Roman Empire. And uh, this is the third edition. You can see I have the uh, first and the second here. Um, I'll go ahead and set those off to the side. Uh, the fact that I own the first and the second in the, uh, the first and second editions of this game. I uh, should tell you that I'm pretty stoked to be able to open up this game today. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, doing this kind of off the cuff here, so I apologize. Just doing a quick and dirty unboxing video. So uh, this game, obviously, you know, is several decades old in terms of the the game Imperium Romanum. This is the third edition, the the third uh version that is published by decision games it just came out it just started shipping this week and i just got it today uh so it's still got the shrink on it and i will be unwrapping that we're going to take a look inside we're going to see uh, what the contents are um and maybe in the future i'll do some additional content for this game um i actually am going to be running this at a convention uh early next year so i will be definitely reading up through the rules, seeing what's different between versions, and, and checking it all out. Uh, it is, unlike the other versions, sort of in this long-form box, so it's not the bookshelf uh, games like you might see, like here, just as a comparison, you know, here's Arquebus, you know, it's uh, a different form factor of, of box, so, you know, if you like setting up your, your games all on a bookshelf, so to speak. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different um, on how you're going to want to hold on to it. So here's the back. It shows the map. Gives the basic description of the game. Uh, notes that there are some new scenarios, which really these are, I'm pretty sure, mostly scenarios that had come from uh, the first edition that were left out of the second edition for whatever reason, and they've sort of been refactored into uh, this current game. Um, it uh, notes on here that the players are 2 to 6, that's true. Hex scale is 50 miles. Playing time is 2 to 36 hours, depending on what scenario you play. Uh, high complexity, low for solitaire, though honestly I think that could maybe be a medium. It's like 1 out of 5, but I, I think it could be higher than that. Um, and the contents apparently are being listed here as uh, three 22 by 34 inch maps, so this is going to take up a lot of table space after all is said and done. Uh, a mini map, uh, almost 1,000 die cut counters, color rules booklet, a scenario booklet, uh, 11 by 17 inch player aid displays, doesn't say how many, but that there will be some, and a player record form, so we'll see if all of that's actually in the box, I hope so. Um, to give a little background about this game, it is a obviously a hex encounter game that covers the uh, Roman Empire and it what's really interesting about the game is that it includes a number of different scenarios that run basically around the time of Marius and Sulla, those early sort of uh, uh, Roman civil wars up through around 650 AD, so you get different scenarios that cover Roman civil wars um, the Roman Empire dealing with incursions from barbarians, uh, Attila the Huns in there, and so there's a lot of interesting different scenarios that take different number of players and will take a different amount of time to play through. Um, very interesting uh, uh, set of scenarios. There is no campaign game, though folks have kind of conjectured about what that might look like. At the end of the day, you know, I think the point is you just pick out some scenarios, you play them, and you have fun with it, though... Uh, my understanding has always been that there are many scenarios that are not meant to be balanced for a competitive game. They are historical exercises, so to speak. So keep that in mind if you're looking into to getting this game. There are, at least in the second edition, there were scenarios that were called out specifically 
as good balanced scenarios for multiplayer competitive games, whereas uh, others simply were not. So I expect the same here once we once we check it out. Um, so we'll go ahead and crack that shrink and uh, we'll see what we get. Oop, sorry for bumping the camera there. Hope I don't make anyone sick. And I did it again. Really sorry. There we go. Let's set this off to the side. Um, and we will take the lid off. Uh, right away I'll say the box you know, I don't really like this long format because it means there's a little less, there's more give in the center here. Um, but the actual box components are seem pretty sturdy. Uh, you can see kind of the, the thickness here is, is decent. So the box should hold up all right. And let's see, get this into view. So we have the rule book. Um, and I just totally dig uh, that they use some of these... Um, uh, classical paintings for not only the box art but apparently the rules booklet um, and scenario booklet as well you can see um, I'm sure that it's noted which piece of art this actually is I couldn't tell you because I'm not not, uh, not an art guy really so here's the rule book it is color um, it is color the whole way through uh, but as you can see there are some pictures that are using uh, counter and map art, though as I kind of flip through this, i let you guys see. A lot of that color is coming in with the um, labeled sections and colored text. I don't see a huge number of pictures and maybe I'm just not in the right part of the rule book. So here's you know the map it's got in here. It's, it's pointing out the, uh, the different counters and what they represent. Um, let's see if I just flip through um, yeah, I'm not seeing a large number of picture examples, which, um, okay, maybe here's a few, uh, for land movement and moving by sea, there's a couple, um, it doesn't seem like there's that many color examples, which is kind of a bummer, um, I was really impressed with Decision Games' reprint of World War I Deluxe, and the number of uh, color examples in there. Um, so kind of a bummer not to see that, but the rule book looks like it's gonna be a pretty straightforward rule book. Um, just flipping through, I'm seeing a lot of sections that are uh, similar to previous editions in terms of the way the, the rules are kind of laid out, um, though it is all sort of in the decision games um, formatting. Uh, but overall, I don't see anything to complain about yet. Um, obviously, I haven't read through these this version of the rules, uh, so I can't tell for sure if there are going to be any major issues. Um, we'll have to look into that as we go here, though it does have on the back a run-through of the game sequence. Probably worth copying, photocopying this a few times so you have some handouts for players. Um, we'll see what the actual player aid charts are like here in a minute. Um, well, they do give... A, some dice, so two dice and a number of baggies. It looks like there's a fair number in here, so ideally you ought to be able to fit all the game counters in these bags pretty simply. The big box will come in handy for containing everything from there. Next is the uh, scenario book, and it looks like they tucked the, um, the uh, counters in, in that scenario book here. But, uh, okay, so here's the scenario book, not color, um, there's not going to be a whole lot of pictures in here, I suspect, so as I kind of flip through here, it's about what I expect it to be. Um, again, I'm familiar with the, a little familiar with the other versions of the game, so I kind of know what the scenario structures will look like in terms of what you actually will read in here, so it looks like uh, it's pretty straightforward, there's going to be a section that covers what the scenarios are, so... Uh, word of the wise, so you have, uh, let's see, if I can find the earliest one on here. So technically, um, they've got some uh, beginner scenarios like the Gaelic Revolt and Pompey versus Pyrus, but then you get Marius versus Sulla, and then you're running to uh, Heraclius and the Last Persian War, and there's potentially... Um, 
introductory scenario, new scenario. I'm not sure what that's meant to signify. Oh, I, I get it. It's a it's a legend key. Okay, up here is where those are at. So there are a couple of different introductory scenarios that are labeled that way. Um, you can see the asterisk next next to a few of them. The dates telling you what the what are the historical dates. There are different periods. So is this early period, like period one or two, or is it late period uh, six? The maximum number of players, minimum number of players for a scenario, and then the optimal. I don't think six is optimal for any of them, um, but it is a maximum. So someone's probably playing a, a, a bad uh, faction in that case. Um, and then what page number that scenario is going to be on. It gives you a little bit of uh, information on how to use the scenario information. And then it gets right into uh, that scenario information, what it's going to be. This is very similar in format to the last edition, so there's going to be basically some basic information on what that scenario is, uh, what rules are used, if it uses special rules or not, um, some historical information, which um, I'll just throw out there. Uh, I, I imagine these are going to be almost verbatim what the second edition had. These are a lot of fun just to read because it gives you a sense of what the scenario involved, why it was happening, and maybe what some of the historical uh, results were, and that can kind of be fun to compare. Um, it's almost like, you know, you've got a mini Roman Empire history book here in the scenario book, which is fun. And then the major powers are listed, and what is going to be shown in here are uh, where you're going to place units. So, you know, in this hex, you're going to put um, a leader that looks like a tw two 2010 units, four 1610 units, one parenthesized four 12 units, and so on. And those are going to key to types of uh, troop counters. So um, setup might take a little while because you got to find these hexes uh, on on the map, and then make sure you're applying the right uh, set of uh, counters. Um, here it's also saying what color uh, that faction is going to be represented by. So Caesar is purple, and the CER is A. CER is sort of like a combat rating. A is the best. So all of Caesar's units are going to be top tier in terms of effectiveness. Um, but, you know, throughout these scenarios, there are also going to be special rules that are going to be, you know, things in addition to the normal rules that are going to be wrapped around that specific scenario, special things related to that, all that kind of good stuff. So there, this is a really thick, um, really thick book. Uh, it is 64 pages, if you count the back page. So 64-page scenario book. Obviously, a lot of scenarios um, to, to try, uh, 41 in total in the scenario list, so 41 scenarios, a lot of content here, very cool. Um, I didn't say how many pages the rule book was, uh, 48, so fair amount of rules to kind of get through from that perspective. Um, here are the counters, so a big change from a previous edition was that uh, you would have counters that were colored. So. Um, purple counters, blue counters, green counters, red counters. Here, while some of the uh, pictures are a bit stylized for what you're looking at um, because of what they represent, you know, a, a 12, uh, 20 unit is always this sort of barbarian looking fellow because those are barbarian units. That will always be the case. But like when you have Roman Civil War scenarios that are going to be using these 1610 units and 2010 units, in the old editions, you would just have different colored counters of 2010s and 1610s and so on. In this one, uh, a Roman legion is a Roman legion, and we'll use these counters, uh, but how you signify whose or whose is just a, a color counter that sits on top or the leaders. So if I'm Caesar and I'm using purple, uh, I'm going to have a purple counter on top or my purple leaders will be on top to show that they're my, my unit so that... Basically, this helps get around a bunch of goofiness that was in place with um, the counter mix. Uh, there are some things that are related to that um, that I'm going to be inter interested to see how this edition deals with it because basically you would use those colors also as a maximum force pool that was allowed. Um, and I suspect there will be similar limitations here as well. So within this little packet, there was a layer of shrink. You've got a counter sheet. Uh, another counter sheet. This one has some cavalry on it. 
uh, and then we get into some of those color notations of leaders. So red, uh, gray, green, sort of brown, tan or yellow, blue, white, green, uh, some orange, some bright yellow, um, purple, obviously. Um, and then you have uh, sort of this, this last counter sheet. Uh, some counters that are going to denote cities on the map that don't exist yet or have been destroyed. So one of the things in this game is that the, the map is quite large and encompasses uh, Europe and, the middle, and some parts of the Middle East, but in the different periods that the scenarios cover, obviously some cities uh, were destroyed or hadn't been built yet, and we use these counters here to uh, mark on the map whether or not the city is actually there in the given scenario. Uh, there's some supply units, and then uh, some fortification counters, and then you have some more of these control markers for the different colors to denote um, control of either stacks, or I guess these could be used to control, to denote control of uh, regions. I'm, I'm not 100% sure of that. Uh, then we get uh, the power record form, and we looks like we get several of these. Uh, Looks like we get, yeah, we get a nice little packet of them. Um, just word of the wise, you're, you're probably just going to end up photocopying these and printing out new ones uh, because each player is going to end up having one. Um, or maybe more than one, but I think they at least will always use one. And this is where you're going to end up recording what, what uh, power you are, what provinces you control, the tax base for them, your morale... Uh, and various other things. So there is some paperwork involved in this game and you'll use these sheets to record them so you get a few to start with, but again you're, you're gonna want to uh, to print off uh, more basically or you know come up with your own spreadsheet designs, whatever you want to do. And then there was a sort of a backing sheet to this um, which I'm not sure I'm gonna hold on to, but there you go. So those are all the counters. I'll, uh, Gonna get these out of the way and reorganize. Okay, and now uh, the final thing here, and we're gonna have some trouble uh, really taking a look at it, is the map sheet. So uh, I'm not sure the best way to really do this with the camera as is, but just as an example, we'll let one kind of get unfolded here on camera if I can get it. And this looks like it is the east map. <laughs> Bear with me here. Uh, so there we go. It is a paper map, so if you're interested in uh, Plexi, that's going to be the way to go. You're going to need quite a bit of Plexi uh, to cover all of it. So this would be the eastern half of the map. You can kind of see, and I'm going to zoom in here with the camera if I can. You can see there are a number of cities denoted on there, so uh, Seleucia, uh, Babylon, and you know that's going to mark potential areas where a city may or may not exist. Um, the hexes are different terrain, uh, which are going to impact movement and potentially supply. You also have rivers there that are going to have various game effects. Uh, there is a... I'm going to make you sick, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a hex key over here, so you can list that out, and then um, down here is a province display, and I'm not sh quite sure what to make of it here, so uh, map hex number is location of province capital, if any exists, scenario numbers are in boxes that indicate road condition, da 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 Okay, so I can see where, interesting, okay. This was always kind of dealt with funny in the last edition of the game. So these different uh, regions on the map would have different levels of cultivation. So they would either be cultivated and not have any roads, or they would have maybe some roads or, or some sort of cross-section of that. This, will, this sort of display over here will help in determining uh, what is the status of a particular region, because obviously in the early period... Uh, there's going to be less cultivation in different areas of Europe, for instance, that will become more cultivated later. Uh, but then in even later scenarios, due to barbarians and, and the sort of falling back of the empire from certain territories, they'll become less cultivated or have less road access 
in later scenarios. So uh, it's just really going to depend on uh, what is uh, the scenario that you're playing. So it looks like this is meant to help with that. It goes all the way down uh, for you know pretty much every single region on the map is going to be represented on there somehow. Uh, and um, there are a few other things again on on the map to look at. The regions are numbered. Uh, there are um, some other various uh, icons like deforested province, which means that Romans can't build forts via uh, deforestation. There's no trees to use. So a bunch of different game effects. Um, the main takeaway here is just that uh, there are different hex types. There's different things you can be doing. There are ports. Um, a lot of you know, in some way, operational movement uh, of armies. Um, and honestly, I could even see uh, some interesting ways that you could leverage this map to play even other scenarios, honestly, like coming up with some fan-made scenarios for Alexander the Great, or maybe some Diadochi uh, interaction. Uh, you could even maybe try to hack the system and hack the game to do some first or second Punic War stuff. Um, might be worth taking a look into that maybe at some point, but again, there's already a huge amount of content in this game uh, that's worth looking at. Um, this video is getting a little long, but uh, probably just would be fun to show the other maps. So, uh, this looks like is going to be the middle map. Yeah, so you can see uh, this is, as, as I zoom out here, you can see there's Greece um, and uh, sort of, you know, what would what would be modern-day Hungary, um, but it's obviously very different. Uh, Serenaica down here, um, Sicily, and just, just a little bit of Italy there, and then obviously our final map is going to be Western Europe. And let's see if I can, there we go. Oh gosh, there's something else even underneath that. Okay, I'm not done, apparently. And then, yeah, here's the West, West Europe. So you get your uh, Hispania, uh, Numidia, um, France, you know, Gaul, I should say, uh, Germania, all that good stuff. Um, there are some uh, up here uh, boxes that represent uh, basically, I think they are meant to represent different areas that couldn't quite be their own hex because they're islands or something along those lines. Um, I'll have to look into that. I, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how that works out. Um, but you can see in the top right there, there's uh, some of the turn record track, month track. There are uh, winter months that have various game effects and like supply that you have to watch out for. You know, don't be venturing into uncultivated territory in the winter if you don't have a supply train, for instance. That's a strategic consideration. So what we have here, oh boy, okay, this is a yeah, this is the the big <laughs> big sheets of stuff. So uh, here is a sort of planning map which, you know, with the formatting of this, I'm not sure what's the best way to photocopy this, um, if you're going to try to do that, but obviously it's a, a sketch map you can use for various things. There's no back to this one. Um, then you have uh, a charts player aid, so there's a supply table, supply and random events, uh, maximum unit build chart, Random events table, deity appeal, grain rebellion. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's there are some things on here that are going to be useful to have at the table. Obviously, siege priority, morale chart, all the game's charts are on here. It looks like, um, and it it looks like this may be the only copy that the game comes with. Uh, so this. You know, what is unfortunate is that there's a bunch of important information on this side, there's a bunch of important information on this side. It might have been good to have two copies so that you could lay both down and put plexi over them or something. So I'm not sure how to feel about that. Um, 
And then the final one here are the mobilization charts. So this is going to show uh, what units and what quality of units can be uh, rallied or, or built, so to speak, in which areas, in what period. So there's a certain amount of learning curve to understanding that. Um, and then the back here is a tax value chart that tells you for every uh, region in the game what its tax value is from period to period, scenario to scenario, and those will be things you'll copy down onto uh, those power record charts when you're playing a scenario. So, um, I right away I'll say I'm not sure I like that these player aid charts are, are these big... Um, these big printouts, it's going to be one, unwieldy at the table, and not going to be easy to create additional copies uh, for players so that we can all look at our own charts and manage our way through the game. Um, because, it, you know, if you're going to scan this or something, you're only going to be able to scan, you know, a half at a time maybe, depending on your scanner, and there's going to be some formatting things to deal with. So I, I don't like this. This is kind of annoying. Um, but it could be worse, I guess. Uh, and a shame that we don't have multiple copies. That, that's kind of the bummer here. But the maps look beautiful. Very cool. Uh, and that's about it. So, that's Imperium Romanum 3. Going to be looking into this game a little bit more. Uh, we'll try to do some coverage on the channel maybe in time. And maybe I'll even do a a uh, review once I've broken it in a good bit. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, hit like. If you'd like to see more content like this, hit subscribe. I do unboxing videos. I also do uh, game reviews and instructional videos. Um, and, you know, who knows what else down the road. So, again, thanks for watching. Take care.